In this video, I'm going to use the PV diagram to represent an isochoric process. Specifically, I'm going to be looking at the physical system of an ideal gas that's enclosed in some container that has a piston. So how can we create an isochoric process? First, we need to understand what does it mean to be isochoric. Another name for an isochoric process is an isovolumetric process. And isovolumetric should give you a clue as to the meaning. It means the volume has to be constant. So isovolumetric, constant volume. So dV has to be zero. The change in volume at any point has to be zero. That's why it's constant. It's a constant volume process. The more common name is isochoric, but isovolumetric is also used, and those are interchangeable. So let's have a look at this physical system. How can we make an isochoric process occur with this apparatus? So we have the ideal gas here. It could be compressed. It could expand. How can we stop that? How can we keep the volume constant? Well, we could put a pin in and lock this piston in place. And if we lock that piston in place, well, then we're going to have a constant volume. Why? Because the only way this volume can change is if the gas pushes the piston up or if the piston pushes down on the gas. And if both of, both of those processes are prohibited by putting some kind of pin, some kind of lock mechanism on the piston, then this is a rigid container that can't change its volume. So the volume of this container will remain unchanged throughout the entire duration of the process. So that's the condition we need. This is the real world physical uh, system. Now what we also have to realize is that this container doesn't have to be thermally isolated. So heat can flow in and heat can flow out. That means the internal energy can change. And because the heat is the only thing that's going to be changing the internal energy, because work is prohibited, because we've got a constant volume, the internal energy is actually directly uh, changed by the heat. So the change in internal energy is just the heat. That's actually the first law of thermodynamics. Because the work is zero, the only way to change that internal energy is through heat. So del uh, delta U is actually equal to Q. That's what this is actually uh, revealing. That's one observation we can make. Now, let's have a look at the PV diagram. On the vertical axis, we have pressure. On the horizontal axis, we have volume. That's why this is the PV diagram. Every point on this diagram corresponds to a coordinate, right? These, this coordinate where you have pressure and volume. So those two values define every point on this diagram. Why don't we have a third axis for temperature? Well, it's because this ideal gas law fixes the temperature. If we know the pressure and the volume, and we know that this number of moles isn't changing because there's no matter being exchanged with the surroundings, then we know that a given pair of pressure and volume have to define a temperature. So this product defines the temperature if we know the number of moles. And we know the number of moles is not changing. Why is it not changing? Because this is, again, a closed container, so no matter can move in or out of the inside of that container. So temperature can change, heat can be exchanged, but the mass inside or the particles cannot be exchanged with the surroundings. And we also have the added condition that it's isochoric, so the volume has to be constant. So what does an isochoric process look like on the PV diagram? Well, it's a vertical line. That's this over here. This is one isochore. So one isochoric process can be represented by a vertical line. If you have a vertical line that's closer to the vertical axis, to the pressure axis, well, then that's going to have a smaller volume. And if you have a vertical line that's over here, that's actually larger, well, then that's actually going to have a larger volume, right? Uh, if you just read off the value on this uh, volume axis, any value that's closer over here to the left is going to have a smaller volume. And as you move towards the right, you're going to have larger volumes. But keep in mind, when you stay on the vertical line, you're maintaining your volume. So an isochoric process is going to maintain its volume, so it's going to stay on that vertical line. The pressure and temperature are free to change, though. right? If we go back to the ideal gas law, this guy is fixed. The number of moles is fixed. R is a constant. So the only things that can change are pressure and temperature. If heat flows in, that's going to increase the temperature, and it's also going to increase the pressure. right? If P goes up, T must go up, because all these other guys are constant. If heat flows out, the temperature is going to fall, but the pressure is also going to fall. So you're going to have a lower pressure inside. So by just changing the temperature, you can change the pressure. 
you can't actually change the pressure by compressing it or expanding it. Again, because you remember, this piston is fixed. There's no way to push that gas. So let's have a look back on the PV diagram. If we begin at the lower pressure, P1, remember this is all at constant V. This V is a constant value for volume. If we begin at P1 and move up towards P2, we're going to be traveling along this vertical line. So this is our start point, and this is our end point. What's that going to look like physically? Well, if we begin at a lower pressure and then move up to a higher pressure, we're going to need to bring in heat. So heat is going to have to flow in. So we can put maybe like a furnace or a Bunsen burner underneath here, and I can warm this up. So heat flows in, and that temperature uh, goes up because heat's flowing in. And because all these other guys are constant, the pressure also goes up. So we have a high pressure environment. So this is exactly like a pressure cooker. So a pressure cooker for a lot of the process, while it's uh, cooking the, the stuff that's contained inside it, uh, heat is added, the volume is constant, it's got an enclosed system, and it's a constant volume. And inside here, the pressure is really high. So you've got a high pressure, you've got a high temperature. What can you do to do the opposite? Well, you can also do isochoric cooling. You can start at high pressure P2, and you can go down to P1. So if you start here, and you progressively move down along this vertical line to this lower point, and you terminate there, that's the same as cooling this down. So if you put this in a uh, cooling box or some kind of refrigerator, and you cool this down, heat would flow from here to the surroundings. You'd have heat flowing out. And what would that correspond to? Well, that would correspond to a decrease in temperature. So a decrease in temperature would then mean that you have a decrease in pressure, because all of these guys are constant. And you have a lower pressure and a lower temperature inside here. So that's what would happen if you have isochoric cooling. So those are the two processes that are allowed for an isochoric process. You can either have isochoric warming or isochoric heating, where you start from a lower pressure and you work your way up to a higher pressure. At the same time, you're also starting at a lower temperature, working your way up to a higher temperature. And you can also have, alternatively, you could have isochoric cooling, where you start at a high pressure and then you move down to a lower pressure. And accordingly, start at a high temperature and you move down to a lower temperature. But for all of these isochoric processes, you are staying on one vertical line. So that's one vertical line that you're moving across. So you're not allowed to jump off that vertical line, and you're not allowed to move to the side. So uh, what is the work done in this process? We've actually said the work is zero, but why is it zero from a graphical perspective? Well, the work done on the PV diagram corresponds to the area under the curve. And this curve is purely vertical. There's no horizontal component to it. So that means there's no area under the curve. The area is actually zero. And if you have zero area, that's zero work. That's because the volume is fixed. There's no change in volume. And you need a change in volume to do compression expansion work. So if the only type of work we're talking about is compression expansion work, then work is zero. And that's what allows us to conclude that the heat is exactly the same as the change in internal energy by the first law of thermodynamics. If the work wasn't zero, we wouldn't be able to conclude that. But luckily for us, the only type of work is compression expansion work in this scenario. So we can just get rid of the work and not even bother uh, computing that because it's zero. Another important thing to realize is that this product, PV, determines the temperature because these guys are constant. So that means if you have a larger product, you have a larger temperature. So if this product uh, has a smaller P over here, and this is constant, and this P is larger, and this is constant, then this product, P1 times V and P2 times V, this guy is going to be the larger of the two. That's why larger temperatures are associated with the top of this and lower temperatures with the bottom. So that's why when we were cooling, we had to go from the top down the vertical line to the bottom. That was isochoric cooling. And isochoric uh, heating or isochoric warming was going from the bottom up to the top along the vertical line. So the takeaway message from this video is that isochoric processes conserve the volume. So the volume is constant for the entire duration of the process. And isochoric processes, or isovolumetric processes, as they're also known, are vertical lines on the PV diagram, where V is constant, but P and T are both free to vary. So the temperature and the pressure are both free to vary. And we can see that the pressure is free to vary along that vertical line.
And what does this look like physically? Well, it's a container that is unable to change its volume. It's a fixed volume container. 